Okay, I guess we will just get started and uh, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> so we, we are still going to talk about something relatively basic today. So we are talk, going to talk about edges. So I guess to begin with, let just and kind of like review and exercise for you guys. I, I can you kind of like uh, fill in the bank for this this thing here, like from these figures. Say D convolve with B. Oh, fill in the bank here, like you see, I have all this. Uh, you, you what do you think the first one is? I don't know. Yeah. G? Yes. So how about the second one? Yes, B and C. So um, F is uh, D. Actually, F almost looks the same as D. So like what? C. Uh, C close. C is close. But uh, if like D convolve with C, most likely we'll get H. Oh right. Yeah. I, uh, D and I, F? Yeah. No, it, it, it probably will get something similar to H, right? Like pretty fussy. Okay, I guess you guys didn't see there's an E here also. I saw it. Okay, this is, but it's not here, right? This is just a table uh, here, and then like, so basically just a shape. So it's shaped by like number of pixels, oh. so therefore like there's E and D and D is is yeah actually what what do you expect? Actually kind of like Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone said I, yeah. It's a, basically you get something kind of like uh, um, lead garbage, I would say. So as I, as I said, like, we'll talk about edges. Like, so I guess I don't need to explain what, what do we mean by edges. Um, and, uh, and of, of course, I actually, like, uh, we can get lots of information from edges. Like, and um, I guess I would just play this video, but I don't know how I, 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 I can actually connect to the audio and just rely on my speaker. Maybe it's like a little bit. Um, so I, by the way, like this is like, maybe I explain what's going on. This is like a very famous experiment. Like maybe you heard of that before, like it's uh, Hippo and Liso. Um, they got a Nobel Prize for in medicine like, because of this work. So basically, like they're trying to pop into like some of the new one of a cat, and they they just give some stimuli, uh, some stimulation to the cat and see like what, how, like under what situation like the cat will the new ones in the cat will fire, 
and it turns out that like um, for that particular ones, like you need to give uh, them give the cat to see some kind of edges, and also like actually it's not uh, any orientation. There's only particular orientation of edges. Like in this case here, like only for this vertical edge, you get some stimulation, and uh, and I would just like Professor Hubel <laughs> talk about his own work. I I don't know what's that. Uh, where is that? Oh, here, here. The well, Nobel Prize with his colleague Torsten Wiesel for mapping the action of receptive cells along the visual path of a primate from the retina to the cortex. I'm not sure how whether Receptor you can hear that. Right? Usually in the, in the visual pathway mean the cells that take in the energy get into electrical signals. And in the retina, those are the rods and cones. There are 125 million rods and cones in each retina. So in the case of the visual pathway, you start with the retina. The output is the optic nerve, which contains a million fibers. They end up in a certain region in the brain. That region, or there are really two or three regions that they end up in. Each of those sends a cable of fibers of the order of maybe a million to other regions, and they connect to other regions. And in the case of the cortex, you have separate areas of cortex, each one connected to one or more other areas. And this whole thing is a pathway. In the cortex, for example, the primary visual cortex, which is about seven stages beyond the receptors in the retina, if those cells uh, react to visual stimuli only if the if a line falls on the retina. And the line has to be a particular orientation. It can be a bright line or a dark line or an edge between bright and light. Any kind of line really generally works. But the position of the line and the orientation are terribly important. And if they're not just right, any individual cell doesn't doesn't respond. Okay, so I'll skip that part. Now, maybe this is like, yeah, a well, bright vertical line stimulates a small number of neurons in the visual cortex of a cat. The crackling sound is the electrical activity of these neurons as they respond to this retinal image. By listening to the intensity of this electrical activity, the researchers can determine the correct orientation of the line. <coughs> But when the line is moved to a diagonal or horizontal position, the amount of stimulation decreases dramatically. We're only at a very elementary stage when it comes to understanding something like how you recognize a face or something like that. The, the general region of the brain is known where, where things like that go on, but we don't have the slightest idea of what's happening at the level of single cells for that particular problem, but for more elementary problems, for the, the very first uh, processes of vision, we do have a very good understanding of what happens at the very beginning. So it's just a start. Misha Pavel of Stanford University is studying the successive stages of information processing that okay, take place I just want to show this is a, a very interesting... Um, this just a minute, tries to find it the red things that the brain are in your visual system because all the people use the rigidity to recognize moving objects. Ambiguous perception of motion can actually yeah. destroy the rigidity percent. In this case, we have a rotating rigid object, a square, but when its corners disappear from view, the square appears to get smaller. When the corners reappear, it gets larger. Another example, we thought that the square loses its rigidity because the visual neurons at each location can see only a small proportion of the entire picture and therefore can't accurately perceive the direction of the moving parts of the object. If we rotate the cross, then the stationary square appears to be rigid. We can simultaneously compare these two situations. I guess I'll stop here. I I just want to show this illusion. It's, I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, and um, not sure how to explain that, though. So, um, and um, let's see. Let's go back to the slide here. Yeah. Well, actually, more recent. So it's not, not that recent, really. Like almost a decade ago, there's some other experiments 
just look at like uh, I think this one they they try to do is like they have a F MRI scan like for for the brain, and then they extract the signal and they just have the subject to look at like the, an actual scene or like just a a scene with only the sketch like with the edges, and they they can from that uh, either a live drawing or like from the photographs they can extract like more or less what they can like decoding uh, accuracy. So, uh, mm, um, like, yes, we saw like that, but the conclusion, like, like you, you definitely, definitely can get lots of information from edges. So what does that mean, the decoding accuracy? Oh, oh uh, it's going to classify categories, like, from the scene there. Uh, I, I don't remember how many categories like, like they like have. Like book? Or yeah, something like that, like, yeah, oh. identify object oh. from that, um, yeah. And, and and they they extract um, they cut but they they not directly classify from the drawing there but they classify from the fMRI signal there yeah and um, so uh, this is another interesting uh, kind of like argument that like okay indeed like you can extract lots of information from edges I guess there's uh, some work that have been done a long time ago like they just try to okay if I I have like all in some some image. And then, like, if I just extract the edges under some assumptions <laughs> and quite a lot of operations, I can be conscious that the the feed is in some of the, like that. So you can argue like, um, okay, you, you indeed there's lots of information from edges, and um, and and of course, of course, like we think of like how did we get the edges? Like, basically, it can be from the surface. Uh, of the normal discontinuity, like if you have the normal is, does not discon does not continue, then you have those edges, or you can have depth discontinuity, like like this one here, or like uh, have some color discontinuity, and uh, so on and so forth. So, and, and of course, uh, in terms of application, like like we we study this as a tools, like like computation as a tools for processing. Um, I mean, video and images. Like we are more interested in detection of edges. So, and um, uh, I mean, of course, like, it is quite intuitive. Like, what do we mean by edge detection here? Uh, but uh, as you will see, like some example up to like, it's where it's still pretty hard to get as good as human. Like we look at a scene and we can do some sketch uh, for a real artist. Like. Can can just put some line and have like um, um, I don't know that that would be or or that maybe we are biased subjective. We're just thinking like those would be the ideal edges, but um, at least we cannot get get close to what um, we have like for what artist drawing basically. I guess at this moment still. So um, um, as we mentioned, like, okay, we can use edge detection to do some pre-processing, extract information, and uh, some special application. For example, if we know edges and we have some uh, 3D objects that we know the geometry there, it maybe we can use that to create the, the the to calibrate the scene. Basically, you can get like, for example, like uh, the camera calibration there. You know the vanishing points and so on and so forth. We'll get get into those uh, later on, like uh, maybe several weeks later. Um, so to start with, like okay, just a quick question: What do you think? Like how how do we extract edges? We we have an image. Like how how intuitively how how do we get edges? Uh, sudden change in the uh, pixel value. Yes. Uh, that would be an uh, X. Like, let's say um, there are like different colors here to here. So if the pixel values change suddenly, then it's an edge. Yes. Yes. So, so um, I guess you are saying okay. Maybe I go for each pixel and see like whether the next pixel has changed suddenly. Is that? Uh, how how do you make it an algorithm? <laughs> Like, like the derivative. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's, 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 the answer is I put it up here. But yeah, basically we look at the gradient, like kind of like so. Just just a reminder, like you guys say, okay, the derivative in one D is basically just an approximation of this limit, right? So if you have some one D function there, and you shift a uh, tiny a little bit delta x, then you want to say, oh, okay, maybe I I have to start short. Let me see if I can. So remember that like if we have a one D function, let's say f x here, right? So so the derivative is like just finding the slope, right? So something like if I start x here, if I move a tiny little bit, I have x delta x, x plus delta x here. So then I look at the difference here, like f x plus delta x minus f x, and then I, I over delta x, so delta x is here, so it's f x, this is, okay, this is f x plus delta x minus f x, and this is delta x here. So that, that way so basically will be this slope way. So if you have a sudden change then then you have this slope will be really big. So this this basically this derivative will be very big. So then we can use use that. Like for one D we, we can just take the derivative. Okay, of course we have here is actually a discrete signal, right? So we cannot um really take delta x for example like for continuous signal what we are going to do is actually we take delta x goes to zero i right? take the limit there but here like things are discrete so what what we can do is like we, we can just say okay let's stay do our best like we will just have delta x is equal to one so because we move one pixel at a time right so then this thing will be approximate into a diff, uh, different equation right so it's actually just fx plus one minus f x something like that so um so that that's what i'm saying right here so of course uh, you can have also like f f x minus f x minus one as well um, f x minus f x minus one as well like this one here so um depends on like whether you do f x minus f x minus one or f x plus one minus f x you you have like different flavor here say like, Doing doing a back uh, backward approximation or forward, or like you can do a central approximation here, um, and yeah, you can do all of this. So in terms of filters, then is this is this operation essentially is just what's that? It's just actually have um a signal that is basically convolved with this filter. Right? So like. Uh, Okay, I should say convolved or correlated, like like here, yeah. with this signal. I think of correlation here. Like I say, then I don't need to flip it. So um. So essentially, like we can just approximate this derivative like use, using filtering again. So we just have like different filters here. So let's take a 1D example here. Let's say I have this is like 1D signal here, 10, 15, 10, 10, 25, so on. So if I have a filter like this. Then will be just like this one is equal to this guy, uh, minus this guy plus this guy, right? So it's equal to five here. So and this one is like minus fifteen uh, plus ten, so minus five, and so on and so forth. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, we we just used the convolve like operator earlier on, but apparently here this is like a correlation here. So, um, I guess um. But I, I guess I here most of the time we use correlation because I it's it's easier. Um, so let let's do, how about this one? This one, what what do we get? Actually, it's the same as previously, right? Uh, can 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 you see the edges here? Like this 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 image, like tiny five by five image. Where's the edge? Oh, all like there are several edges here, kind of. Mm -hmm. Right. I guess the biggest one would be between the second and second yeah. column. Yeah. There, there's a vertical edge here. Like uh, I, I can see there's a 
not show all three edges, two edges here. So, okay, if I do this operator, basically, well, you can see that like, I, I basically, uh, this only detect the horizontal edges, right, apparently. So this is like, if you remember, like we talk about filter, like if this is essential, actually, another way to interpret this, the derivative is essentially just a high pass filter. Right? So this is actually a horizontal high pass. So it only, it's for a cup, like, <laughs> so uh, 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 something something wrong with that? Like, are you agree with well, that? You mean why it's only horizontal, or like it's a high pass? You think? I'm trying to see why it's a high pass. Uh, why is a high pass? Um, What kind of operations happening? Is this like, like, are we multiplying your two things or what are we doing? Actually, uh, what? Like, what, like, how does this operator work? Like, is it a matrix multiplication or what? Like, what's happening? Oh, okay. It's a com. It's, it's a correlation. So something like okay. this one. So this, this, I get the output of this one will be like this patch correlate with this guy. Yeah, so, or, or you can think of the convolution of this flip thing here, but yeah. But uh, is it correct to think like, okay, well, yeah. edges are small in space, yeah. so then their frequency information is high frequency information? Actually, the easiest thing is that you, you can just look at, look at the free transform of this guy. Yeah. So I, I, have, I have a patch here, if I take a free transform of this guy, uh, it it will um okay I I guess I hmm. what what's a good way to look at that okay um. So if I look at this filter here, just I if I wipe it out, it's more or less like this way. And um, and and if you think of like okay, what what's a Fourier transform? Fourier transform is just you have some signal that project like okay, you have some basis, a like sinusoidal basis that is going to project this this signal onto this basis, right? So now you think of like what kind of signal what uh, sorry, what kind of basis that this signal project to will have highest value. It it won't be like something like that low pass way. Because uh, if you have like smooth like long changing signal here, then this will be basically cancel out right? if this kind of like dot port with this signal here will basically cancel out. So the thing like it basically will maximize this this guy here is I have some sinusoidal sort of like this, right? Like this, yeah. And, and this is a high pass one, right? Basically like if this one have like high frequency like changing like this, this guy and this guy will basically will cut in sync and have the maximum value. And anything is I have a lower frequency than this guy, for example, like if I have something like that, or then if like this both of this is kind of big, like about the same level, then basically cancel out. So therefore you 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 kind of have a high pass. It's kind of like similar to a high pass filter. And on, on the other hand, like if you think of oh how about this then? If I have a this thing, is this a high pass or low pass? As a filter, which one? Uh -huh. which one? Oh, okay. This one on the on the white here. Oops. On the right. Yeah. It's not, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you can say, okay, yes, actually it's like, 
uh, not a perfect low pass, but it's closer to a low pass. I can use the same argument here. Right? I think of like workout basis project, um, this signal project to workout basis. Yeah, right. If I have like some low pass here, like it's basically big. But on the other hand, if I have high pass, I keep oscillating here. So this basically will cancel out. Yeah. So therefore, like this, this actually, if you think of like what is this Fourier transform, it's the same function, right? Like, really. So it's like it's it's uh, not an ideal low pass, but it's it's have that kind of shape there. Um. So then. I, I will skip that. I just uh, actually, but, but you can think a little bit ahead. Like, if I do, okay, okay. Of course, I can instead of doing this um, filter, I can have filter like. Uh, let, let me see. I can have those. Uh, what do I call that? Like, uh, I forgot how do I call that. Uh, uh, cent central like filter like like this one let's say so this sensor have kind of the same property right if I I blow the scale or something like that more or less the same property so compare this guy with say this guy so what do you what do you think like the difference here uh, here's the, uh, the exact edge like we got the last time that yeah. will be all zeros and the rows beside it will have values. Oh, okay, so sec. Second and fourth row will have values, but the middle values will be zeros. Yes, actually, <laughs> you're true for this particular example, actually. Yeah, you're right. But um, I, 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 I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, in general, what, 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 what's the difference? Like, if just not for this pattern, in general, what's the difference? Like for. Like this filter uh, versus this one. Just doing the X and Y, as it means, right? Yeah. So we're just doing like, yeah, different edges, like because normally. Um. Uh, I'll give you some hint. Like this one is essentially like doing. This filter can't follow by like this one. Right. So because I, I can I can essentially this one I can cut the compose as I pull of this vertical one and this horizontal one. So it, this is essentially like I okay if it's easier to think of confusion. <laughs> so uh so if I as assume confusion, like the only difference, remember, like if I'm doing confusion or not, it's just I should flip the signal, right? So I I, I will assume I'm doing confusion because if I'm doing confusion, I can just commute like association, like everything work. So I can I can do this first or do this first is is t totally fine. Um. So yes, but vertical, like, be careful, like vertical here. This is a different filter, right? This is we just mentioned like the vertical is a low pass actually. Yeah. Horizontal is a high pass. So the combined effect is like you can think of either you do a high pass horizontally and then you smooth out vertically. Or the other way one, you just smooth out like uh, vertically and then you do a high pass. So in other way, like you smooth out the image somehow. Um I mean for that um for the high pass. Um, actually, we'll, we'll give uh, this. I I just I will come back to this one again. Like this is actually called long as the sobek filter, um, and uh, so here let let's look at another example here. I have this is an actual image, and I do this filter like or like what I'm saying like derivative like or the like hyper filter along this way, along this axis. So then the derivative I will have that way. Right? This basically the slope first go down and then go up again right? like, like this. Then I can detect the edges, I just do the, do some fast loading, right? I I can look at the absolute values of this output of this derivative and then like maybe I can set a threshold somewhere, like this one, 
then I'll say, okay, this this is address now. Then I, I, I will be able to detect address. Uh, everything is good, but the problem, okay, besides that, uh, by the way, this is only one direction, right? So I can do both directions. If I do two directions, then I have two components there, right? Basically, I'm doing gradient. Then, um, yes. Then, then the direction of direction of addresses you can read it from here, right? So the direction of the address would be, for example, like if I I have um, taken the gradient. Think of what is gradient there. Like for example, if I have like uh, like in this case here. The the gradient is basically the the pointing to the direction that is going most up here, right? It's the steepest slope, right? So, therefore, like actually, the the gradient, the direction of the gradient here is actually normal to the edge there, right? So, therefore, when you compute the gradient, you actually you can also from that gradient information to know not just actually you can get the direction of the edge. Yeah, actually, I, yeah, we can come back to that later. Yeah, and then I, uh, of course, you can get the strain of the edge is basically the the magnitude of the gradient. Um, and there's some example here. I have this tiger here, and uh, I have this. Uh, okay, which one is x? Which one is y? By the way. So. Oh, by the way, I, I call this x here. Let's say <laughs> I need to first define x and y. So this is x. This is y. So which which one is I taking? Which one is the x component? Which one is the y component? Left is x. Left is x. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Left is x and y. The white one is y. Right. Um, and uh, so so far so good. But the problem is like. When you have image, it's not always so nice where everything is smooth, right? For example, I have image here, like I can have like the lots of noise in the intensity. So then for example, I have this is my signal, basically like the intensity there. So if I just take the derivative, I basically get all the noise here, right? So I, I basically I will be drawn in the noise. I, I can't figure out the edges actually here. So what should I do? <laughs> um, should you take the derivative over like a wider space? Like use more samples? Um, if you try like you take a hand to move that like the door to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually Israel is uh, that one is a standard answer. <laughs> I think that that one is probably like if like Brandon said, like probably you will end up the filter is like, like the same as like uh, kind of like filter uh, low pass and then and then do a high pass also. So it's actually like as you can see maybe this this one here. So uh, that's exactly what is what I said there. Like I maybe I can just do a low pass first. So after a low pass, so I have a signal like this, and then afterward I do the derivative there. So, but uh, on the other hand, I think branding is not not completely wrong there also. So you can think of this say like f star g here. So this is a basically you have uh, okay f is the original signal, right? So you low pass this, and then you take the derivative. So then this guy um is basically the the convolution here, right? That's just the convolution. But you're taking derivative over x, right? So you can get inside the the integration there, and then like you see that this is actually essentially another function, right? So it's like just f convolve not with g but convolve with this dx dsg here. So you're essentially just convolving with with this operator here. So it's essentially similar to what Brandon just said, like you're like taking an inter High pass, but like like a wider range there. So uh, and this is a uh, called the uh, DOG filter, derivative for Gaussian. So you have a shape like this, and you can again like do both x and y direction. Right? You can then basically you have the 
the get the component from x and y direction. Then again, like you can take x as take the combine as the gradient, and then you can get the direction and also get the um, the magnitude of the edge as well. And this is an example of DOG filter. And um, and as I mentioned, I actually we just look at the software filter already. Uh, actually, software is not exactly what I mentioned there. But you can think of like I I can have smoothing. So this one is basically like a low pass in vertical direction, right? So as we mentioned earlier, if I have this followed by my high pass there. So this is essentially is like what we have earlier. That actually maybe I, I have earlier this is minus one there, but but essentially the same. Um so uh but I can use other smoothing like because this is essentially just a low pass, right? I can use a low pass like this is a more like a step function, but I can smooth a little bit. So if I use a more Gaussian like actually uh it would be will have less um I would say uh, aliasing like in the high pass. If you remember like if you, you have this as we mentioned like if you take a free transform here you will have lots of like small term because it's the same function, right? If if it's small Gaussian like then it will decay faster basically. So um um yeah I actually I, that one we, we show earlier is called the period edge detector actually. But uh, yeah, this one is a software actually. I, I, I didn't I'm not exactly correct. Like I was not exactly correct earlier. So this is a software filter actually. And um so I and uh and of course again like we can compute the magnitude and the direction as before. So just just a remark here, like you, you see that both DOG and software is doing very some something very similar, right? But you can think of like um DOG is like kind of smoothing in all directions, right? Because you first do a Gaussian filter there, you, you do a kind of like a low pass over the entire patch. But software basically just like smoothing along one direction. The direction that kind of like um perpendicular to your uh high pass direction. So uh I guess in the in the sense I um I, I didn't look it up, but my impression is I saw it typically is a little bit sharper the detection. Um but okay, just my opinion, honestly. Like you, you guys may may want to take it a bit more. Um so this is some example like you have software filter, like you can this is the edge. Uh, at least from this figure, uh, this uh, example here, I think it's like a bit more. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll, of course you can just pay it out yourself. Like, yeah. And uh, so, of course, there's some of this problem with the filter we just mentioned earlier using this kind of edge detection is the scaling, right? Because I, um, I can have different kind of edges. Like I have pretty sharp edges like this. Um, and, and if I scale in a bit more, the edges may become more like this, more like a one way. And if I use the same kind of filter, this may be earlier on like I consider as edge, but this no longer can this consider as edge anymore. Um, so uh, people look into like more robust way to kind of like more adaptive way for detecting edges, and. Uh, so one possibility, uh, of course, that uh, you consider different scaling. Like uh, maybe you can try to smooth out with different Gaussian filter before. If you are using DOG, maybe you can use different Gaussian filter before you do the edge detection. Um, and uh, of course, ideally, like uh, we want to get the edge is like hopefully just like what the artist drawing where right? you have like one true edge there, we want to like pretty much localize to the neighborhood of there and hopefully also like we, we don't have we don't want to have too too many responses. Like if I have one edge there, just one edge there, we don't want to have a very thick edge there. So um okay, I, I would 
spends a little, little bit time to talk about uh, a very famous edge detector. It's kind of like a, a kind of like combination, kind of like um, an improvement of the software and uh, DOG uh, edge detector. So the kind of detector is actually pretty old, but uh, uh, it's like have huge amount of citation. I don't know who take this record there. Like probably it's like much more than that now. So um, and uh, the idea is pretty simple. So maybe just uh, you can use DOG or software. Actually, here like I, I got some slides saying use DOG, but I I think like in OpenCV the implementation actually is start with software. So you after you get some edges, um. So either DOG or Sorbet, then uh, you have some initial edge, edges, right? Um, then of course you, you need to do some fast sorting there to decide like, what's edges, right? So to fast sort the magnitude. Um, now this this have like basically like um, it uh wait a sec. Which step go first? I'm thinking. Oh, maybe here first. So um, this uh, it, it it has uh, several refinement there. It's actually pretty simple. One thing we just mentioned that we want the edge to be not too thick, right? If we have one edge, it's just one edge there. So it uses a so-called long maximum suppression. The idea is it's quite simple. So basically, if you have a pawn, this is a potential candidate of an edge. So basically, it's larger than certain threshold. Then you just check whether it's the local maximum. So you can just like, for example, I have a point here as a candidate. Then I just say I I know the edge direction. Right? It's, it's basically the the gradient. Basically, the, um, I know the gradient there. I compute the gradient. Let's say the gradient is here. Then I just project to that direction. So to these two points here, and these two values, I can got it just by interpolation. Right? Then I can just compare this guy whether it's like larger than these two guys here. If so, then I will consider it's a true, uh, true edge point. Otherwise, we'll just discard that. So then, <coughs> with this long maximum suppression, you you have uh, something like this, like much kind of like uh, better edge. Uh, so uh, and then like it has like another trick is like. Um, they call it like a hysterious uh, fast holding. I, I guess it's basically just adaptive fast holding. So, um, so of course, like, we have one fast hold that we always have one fast hold to consider whether it's edge or not. Right? That's, that fast hold is like a high fast hold. Is uh, basically any um, any DOG is bigger than that one, we we'll consider that definitely is an edge point. Um, if it passed the long mass uh, suppression, um, then afterward, like it will then uh, try to connect the. Um, then it has another threshold. The another threshold is like for any other points, it's like larger than that threshold. It will be a potential candidate of edge point. So then, like, what it's going to do is like trying to, um, from the edge there, extend to like label neighborhood, and see if there's any weak edge. Point there. If there's a way edge point, you just connect there and continue to go. So that, that's the, the idea, basically. So um, let's see whether I should go into this. Yeah, I think I, think I don't need to. So, of course, uh, you connect to the edge point, like, you, you don't need to look into the, all the neighborhoods because you have the edge direction there, right? So, for example, like, I know the edge is like this one here. So <clears throat> If there's a weak point, or, or maybe I should say, like if I have the edge like this, so now I have this strong, it's like strong edge point here, then uh, I have some weak edge point here, so <clears throat> it's only connect to this this point here, right? That's it's not reasonable, like to connect to this point or something like that. And I know this direction here just from the gradient. Yeah. So any questions? So basically, that that's the uh, famous Kani detector. And um, um, of course, the parameters for Kani, as you can see, that's uh, that's uh, filter uh, basically. For if you're using DOG, you have the variance of the DOG, so therefore you have the sigma there. Then you have the low fast and high fast yeah, 
and that's basically it. And uh, there's a paper I won't get into that. Uh, this is an old paper. This compare edge detector like uh, I'm not sure that's newer work here. This is pretty old paper now, almost a decade now. Um, <coughs> But you can see, like at that time, I still like we consider him as way better, like in terms of edge detector. Uh, Connie, I think is this one is is like uh is not really that good like compared with um the state of the art like uh, but uh, what is it? So what is it showing? Precision. Oh yeah, yeah. This is precision versus recall. This is so called this ROC curve. So what's recall? Uh, recall is like um. You expect that point is an edge. How many of that point you can? What fraction of that point you actually get it? Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so, and that that's pretty quick. I guess I, since I expect this is pretty short. Also, like mm -hmm. make sure I can do some demo or something like this. Uh, so maybe to start with, uh, let's see. Uh, they have this copy, this thing that is just doing a copy that you did in homework one. Let's see if I can, if I, I want to do detection. Let's see. Okay, maybe let's do something like cup. Um, cup, like, uh, what should I say, like low level first. Um, let me convert to, yeah, convert, yeah, of course I should convert to uh, grayscale first. Okay, I'm putting in there after the initial. Okay, let, let's let's try to do a filter. So let's try to do some um, low level. So uh, let me make a low pass filter here. Let's say I have a kernel. Is I I can use MP. Just make an array. So let's see, have this minus one, zero one. Let's say. Minus one zero one. Oh, actually, this is piece width. Maybe I I do a sorbet here. So this would be a sorbet, right? Oh, let's see. I have. Oh, okay. Import numpy. So let's see. I can do a. Let's see, what's what's wrong with that? Frame. Okay. So let me call the X component. Okay. The second argument, I think, is just number of channels. Like I can put minus one there. That will automatically detect. It. Oh, okay, I'm not. Let's let's show the ix there. Hmm. Actually, I I I again forgot. Like, I am sure you guys have super eyesight. So um, so this you see like this is basically have the filter in the x direction, right? So I can. This is high pass like top. Like a super filter in the x direction, I can do a y direction there. Uh, I can just transport that filter and use it. So that this is our y direction. Um, let's see. Oh, I have 
I it's a my y. Uh, I'm thinking like maybe this is this is interesting to show, but uh, it's a lot of typing. Okay, I guess it's okay. I, I want to show you show you that indeed the slope is pointing to that direction. Maybe I but um let's see. Uh, let me just form my mesh grid first. Uh, X Y. Here. Uh, okay. Do I need to divide that? I guess maybe I don't. This. Hmm. Let's see what what do I get here? Okay. Like this um, may not be very easy to see though. I may maybe I change the scale and do that to do that. Um, let's see. Wow. Uh, yeah. Actually, the original scale is better. Thinking what? Okay, this this is not very clear, but you you can see the direction of the the edge there. So I guess like this is basically this region here. So if I can't port the x and y component with this quiver port, then you, you can see how the gradients go. Um. So uh. time do I have? Actually, I, I still have... Yes, instead of like uh, a... a DOG... Instead of here, like I'm doing a SOPA filter, as I mentioned, right? This is SOPA. So let, let's do a DOG. So DOG, so I can have... Uh, again, like I, I let, let's do something like low level first. Then I will show something more like high level. So, 
I can create uh, the kernel directly. So instead of like have this kernel here, so I set the kernel as uh, this side pie have a long PDF. Like you can get the PDF of, of uh, the the Gaussian Gaussian distribution. So instead also like it's a normal distribution. Right? So I can from lean space PPF. This is like the pawn. What's that called? Like, I forgot. Like how do you call it? I see. That's the. Point function. So basically, like it's like when I say uh, PPF uh, zero point zero one, it's like where I will get the distribution zero point zero one. So so something like this. So if I have like consider the normal PDF there, the Gaussian uh, PDF there like this. So I have this long PPF. This is zero point zero one is basically like at the point here, this percentage or like this fashion is one percent, something like that. So let me do like from zero point zero one to uh, zero point nine nine, and then and let's say the filter size I can put nine here. So maybe I put put this out. Yeah, it's more obvious what I'm doing here. So, um, and then I, uh, this is 1D, right? I can make it 2D to use outer portal. So if you look at like what I have here, uh, so then, then this you have a Gaussian, kind of Gaussian attached, right? So then I can, Do the filter now is like uh, just this one will be just a Gaussian filter. And if I do this, it will be basically just a Gaussian filter. So this is just smoothing out basically. So um, let's see. Then, uh, I I can add back my uh, so I guess I should say uh. I can create a DOG filter basically. Okay, let, let's call it DOG. Is basically is I convolve these two things together, right? So I will convolve to this one. I also like to get it from side pi basically. Uh, convolve to the This DOG, so I should get a uh, uh, come off, come off to the. Oh, that's missing a D here. And where is that? Oh, probably the camera. Let's see. Two D array. I probably missing a bracket here. Yeah. This is okay. This is like another thing. Like, uh, if you guys using MATLAB and um, like um, 
convert, I mean, kind of like starting to use a Python, like be careful that NumPy, like, you need to have like extra back if you have like 1D and stuff 2D, I mean 2D instead of 1D. So. But it doesn't make sense, like, how, 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 okay. Maybe I should ask you, how, how do I write a transport of this guy? Transpose? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't use the transpose function. Yes. So what what do you expect? Like this is supposed to look. Minus one zero one. Yes, yes. But 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 how do you write it here? Maybe a semicolon. That that would be my lab. <laughs> Are you saying like in a 2D, with 2D? Yeah, yes, here is a... Wouldn't you just do like bracket, and then minus one, and then another bracket? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, you, you will have something like this. This is like the transfer of this guy will yeah. be like that, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, so anyway, like, hopefully this time will work. I probably need to one two times with my camera. Right? Yeah. Okay. So this this is a the DOG, but just one direction here. Uh, let me do the other direction. So just make sure I'm correct. But right? this is showing. Is that right? Yeah. It's it's kind of, Okay. So okay. Like finally, I guess I, I just. Uh, of course, you 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 can look at this high level command there. Uh, but I, I think like, it's always good to because this is really simple also like no like if you because if you use kernel and filter 2D you can basically uh, filter any kind of um, use any kind of filter basically or design any shape you want um, but let's try Kani detector so if I use Kani let's say um, so let, let's skip all this now Honey, or just detect edges, right? Maybe I just comment all this, and I call edge edges three two honey. Honey is very simple here, so you just have like um. I I ignore the sigma there, like only the high threshold and low threshold there, so I that uh that will be the honey. So let's hopefully it will work. Yeah, let's let's uh. So you have to. If I want more edges, by the way, like, like what, what do you expect if I increase this to three hundred? Do you expect more edges or fewer edges? I missed the question. Yeah, I mean, like originally it's two hundred. Like if I change to three hundred, let's say, do you expect like you have like more edges? More detector address or like fewer detector detector address. Wait, what, what does that fraction mean? What is the do, do you remember you have this high fraction, no fraction? I think, I think with this parameter, it doesn't have to do with any. It's, I think the 100 is the number of bits that we get. Uh, we get. Yeah, um, ah, uh, actually, maybe we should go back to the slides. So the county detector basically, mm -hmm. the procedure is more or less like this, right? So after you do DOG, you you have a fast forwarding there, like you have to have to manage it there. Then um, you 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 have two fast forward. One is like the larger fast forward, one is smaller one. So everything is larger than the larger fast forward. You consider as edges. And then like everyone larger than the smaller fast forward will be like consider as like potential candidate for edges. 
So for the potential candidate, you you will need some edges nearby to kind of like link to it. Otherwise, it will just be discarded. So then again, like the question is like, if I increase this larger threshold, do you expect that you have more edges or like fewer edges? Yes, yes, you are right because like. I, if I increase the vessel really big, let's say 500, only the DOG values is larger than this will be considered has to be like edges, right? But it's not very apparent here, I guess. Like, let's see, maybe I, I decrease it, maybe more apparent, let's see. Maybe I even made a thousand, let's see. Yeah. Let's see, like, have. And, uh, and of course, you. Kind of the same for the lower one, lower number as well. So if I increase that, then there will be less candidate to be the. Uh, but I guess it's probably less apparent than yeah. But this this kind of connect more. Yes, yeah, you can see. Um, because more candidates now considered as weak edges. Um, Yeah, very efficient. <laughs> so yeah, okay. I guess I I probably just stop here. So uh, I'll see you guys on Thursday.